friends, welcome to the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, and I am coming to you from Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Today is Saturday, April, I believe today is the 22nd, 2023. So yeah, I would first like to start off by welcoming any new viewers who are tuning in for the very first time, welcome. And to all my returning viewers, welcome back. This is a podcast primarily about my knitting adventures. There is the odd time where I do bring a little bit of crochet into the mix or spinning, but unfortunately, there's none of those things today. It's just pretty much knitting. So yeah, um, I always put detailed show notes uh, in the description box below. So I link them directly to any pattern designers or makers that I talk about. So yeah, you can find that below. Um, so it's been two weeks back on track. Um, so it's been a wonderful two weeks, a weather report. Um, it's been glorious weather here in Southern Ontario. We have had, uh, I'm going to say about a week and a half where we've been in, uh, the double digits, uh, on the plus side of things. Uh, we had plus 30 temperatures for three days in a row last week. That is 30 degrees Celsius. I don't know Fahrenheit for my American friends, but, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. It was pretty friggin' warm, but not complaining. I love it. Today it's, um, it's overcast, but the sun's still popping out the odd time and we're up to like 24, 24 degrees Celsius, I think. So I was already out. I went for a little stroll to get my Timmy's. So I'm drinking Timmy's today and oh, it was just so nice. I just took my time and enjoyed. I also, not that you can really tell, but I got my brand new chair. Uh, I have a power wheelchair. I've had the same one for eight years now and she served me well, but uh, I go out all the time. I cannot stay inside. I like going just like for strolls or go for a coffee, what have you. So I am out all the time. So I put a lot of wear on my uh, power wheelchairs. But um, so yeah, my my original one, eight years since I had it and she she's falling apart. So um, I applied for a new one and it came in, um, believe it or not in December. No, I think it arrived here in Kingston in uh, January, but it took this long to receive it. They're waiting on a special back that's coming from New Zealand. Uh, I, the back that's on it right now, there's nothing wrong with it, but they want a proper fitted one for my back. Uh, so it's coming from New Zealand. So it's on a boat. It's on its way here. Um, so they were keeping it a bit longer, but they decided to give me with uh, the back that's on it now because my old chair is just getting to the point where it's, it's not safe to take anywhere. So I do have my new chair and I love it and I'm enjoying it. I sit up a little bit higher now, which is great for trying to reach things. Um, the only problem is my other chair, I sat a little bit lower. So now I just have to be careful when I go to reach for stuff that's a little lower, I have to watch my balance. But besides that, it's a much smoother ride. It's amazing. It's got Bluetooth. Uh, I don't think you can like listen to music or anything like that, like connect it through. I think it just pretty much, uh, tells you like your battery life. And, uh, uh, if there's any problems, you can send like the diagnostic report right through to your company that fixes them. So very, very advanced. So it's very nice and I am loving it. So thank you to Berg, uh, elevating here in Kingston, Ontario. They are a wonderful, wonderful company and I love my chair. So lots of exciting things have uh, been happening the past couple weeks and uh, yeah, it's been good. Uh, on the side of knitting, um, I have been knitting a little bit more. I have been having wrist issues for well over a month now, which is it slowed me down a bit. So I got a uh, wrist brace and I wear it to bed every night and sometimes through the day if I find that it's really starting to bother me. 
and it has been helping. So still not knitting as much as I normally would, but the wrist brace is helping. So that's a good thing. So I have some finished objects today and I have some works in progress. So I think it's going to be a pretty big, a fair amount, a uh, fair size show. So grab your favorite beverage and let's get into it. Alrighty. So, um, I guess I'll start off with what I'm wearing today. I am wearing my, um, love note by tin can knits. I absolutely love this. I think this is like my third love note that I've knit. It's amazing. I've talked about it a whole bunch, so I won't go into detail. Um, I did like, uh, short sleeves on it, which is perfect for days like today. Um, I did this in Leo and Roxy fingering, um, and there I held it with a strand of mohair. It's in their Robin colorway. It is amazing, and I absolutely love it. So that's what I'm wearing. And finished objects. So because my wrist has been so sore, I haven't been wanting to work on anything too big. So socks have been an obsession. Socks are always an obsession of, for me, but more so of late. So I had, I'm pretty sure I had showed these before as a work in progress, but I finished my March mystery socks. Uh, this is a mystery box uh, available from the Northern Pearl and I absolutely love them. They are so pretty. She did like two stripes and then on the lighter one it's speckled and I absolutely love that. It is amazing. So I did my best to match everything up and worked out pretty well. I just don't understand why one toe is like solid green and the other one ended up being lighter. I don't know how that worked out but they're the same size so don't know. But I just did uh, 60 stitches, two by two ribbing, and I did a slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset. And yeah, they are amazing. And somebody already tried to claim these, but it ain't happening. These are mine. This is Agile's yarn, special yarn, so they are mine. So March Mystery socks, they were a lot of fun to, uh, to do. I did not have them done in time for St. Patrick's Day, but that's okay. That is okay. So I'm just going to um, put my next pair on the sock blockers. So that colorway name, uh, it, there was actually a name for it. It was Shamrockin. Genius. Absolutely genius. I love it. Just get these on the sock blockers. So the next pair, um, I, I think I showed these as well as a work in progress. These are a pair of simply ribbed uh, socks by This Handmade Life. And this is the version, she's got a couple different versions. But this is the version with the square heel on square heel on it. So there they are. My I made them slightly uh, longer. Uh, my friend, I knit socks for him, and he said he wanted the foot just a little bit longer. Um, they're a little too long now, but he said not to rip them out. That it's fine. So I'm I'm not ripping them out. But it's the square heel, you can see. I really, really love these patterns. The other one, I couldn't remember the name of it last time, it's the Simply Ribbed Socks. So it's the same concept. You can cast on like a one by one rib and then go into the body of the sock, which is all ribbed. Or you could just cast on your, like the, um, the two by two up here and just continue it down. The heels on both socks are really cool. It's all ribbed and I just really, really enjoy them. This one's my favorite. I felt feel that if I was to do it uh, like another pair, I could actually like memorize the heel 
and not have to look at the pattern to do it again. It's that simple. The other one is too, it's pretty straightforward and easy as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know how they fit just yet because I just finished them and I didn't want to get them dirty. I wanted to show them, but uh, I'm very curious to see how they fit. If they fit well, then I think I might be doing this instead of the heel flap and gusset, which fits my foot better. So I guess we will see, time will tell, but it looks pretty promising. So I guess we'll see. So I do have two completed socks here. Absolutely love this colorway. It is so much fun. It is a opal, I believe. Let me just double check that. I am a good podcaster this week and I brought my tag. So it is opal. I'll just show it to you instead of trying to butcher the the name. I picked this up at Yarnit in Coburg and I was automatically drawn to it. I just love the color. So the colorway I suppose is three. There's two different numbers. It might be 11204 or 3068. I'm not really sure which one. I believe it is the 11204. If I remember right, I put that in my Ravelry, I think. So I love uh, Opal. It's it's a hard wearing uh, sock, so I find that they do tend to last a little bit longer. But um, although they feel slightly rough, I feel that when you wash them, they do soften up a little bit. So if you're sensitive, uh, I do have sensitive skin to certain uh, wools that are a little bit more picky, a little bit more rough. On my feet, it doesn't really bother me, but if that's something that bothers you, you might want to, um, you might want to go to your local yarn store before maybe purchasing online, but it is very nice yarn. And like I said, it's a real workhorse type yarn. And I really love Opal, um, because Reggia is like this too. There's there's many different uh, sock yarns out there, but this one's self-striped and a lot of the um, the other opals in that, they either self-stripe or self-pattern and it's a good price point. I think I only paid like $16 Canadian or $18 Canadian for, for this ball. It comes in 100 gram, uh, 400 and some yards. So it's a great price point and I definitely have enough yarn in there to make another pair. So I might make myself some shorty socks. I don't know yet, but there is my second completed pair of socks. Super excited about that. So I'm just going to grab a sip of coffee because I'd like to enjoy it while it's warm. Okay. So I showed those and that's, that's all I have finished. So I do have a couple hose though. So it's not in that bag. All right. So since I just showed you the rib sock, I will show you the simply ribbed one. So this is again by this handmade life. And I'm just going to put it on a sock blocker. I had showed this before, but I will show it again in case you're new. So this one here is the same concept. You cast on one by one rib and then you do uh, the two by two and the ribbing follows all the way down into the heel, except this heel is shaped a little bit differently. And it is amazing. I really, really like it. And again, I don't know how they fit just yet because this is the first sock. I have the other one on the go. I was hoping to have them both done, but it just didn't happen. Um, so as you can tell for this one, I just cast it on the two by two rib right from the get go. And you continue the rib right down into the heel. And <laughs> I showed this a couple episodes ago and I don't know if anybody caught on to it, but uh, you're supposed to continue the ribbing into the toe. And Bobby did not do that. 
she <laughs> she just did like stockinette, which is fine, but if I had been paying attention, it looks a lot more cohesive if you continue the ribbing right down into the toe, which is the first time I've ever done that. And it's freaking genius if you're doing a ribbed sock because it just, it just makes it look a lot more beautiful and put together. So yeah, I don't know if anybody caught that, but uh, I was talking uh, to my friend Agile after the podcast and she was um, knitting the uh, square heel version and I saw her completed sock and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like the rib went down into the toe. And then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and yeah, if, if I had been paying attention, I was supposed to do that. So I just picked my uh, my uh, Kitchener stitch out, took it back to um, the foot and just redid the toe. It wasn't, wasn't anything major, but yeah, that was pretty funny. So this is my first sock. And I have the second one on the go here. I ended up uh, finishing off the heel and I am working on the foot right now. So I was so, so close, but just didn't happen. So as you can see, there is the, uh, the heel. It's just so pretty. I really love these patterns. So this Handmade Life does have a DK version as well. I had talked about this before. It uses, uh, you can either use just plain DK or she held fingering with a strand of mohair. And I have knit a pair of mohair socks before and I gifted them because I made them too small for myself and I was not ripping back mohair. Um, so I think I would like to cast a pair of those on and do that. So it seems like it's the same concept. It's the ribbed and then it, the ribbing goes down into the heel as well. So I just found the, the patterns very interesting and I wanted to try them. I love doing my heel flap and gusset because like I said, they work for me and I don't know. I just saw these patterns and I thought, well, you know what? Maybe these will work for me too. And it just gives me something new to try, a new technique and maybe something new that will fit better or something that I can mix up every once in a while. So there's that one. And the yarn that I am using for this is Sandus Garn. And the color number, I suppose, would be 3544. Very beautiful yarn. Um, if you were to, this is the color number, but if you look it up on uh, Line or on Ravelry, it's the Terracotta colorway. Very beautiful. And it is such a soft yarn. And it does have nylon in it. Or it better have nylon in it. It does. 80% uh, wool and 20% nylon. So they are 50 gram balls. So if I knit myself a pair of socks, I have to use two balls. Uh, because I just don't have enough if I want to do a slightly longer leg. So there's those. And then, um, instead of, I could have had that brown sock done, to be quite honest, but <laughs> I cast it on a new sock. So, Kaylee, my good friend Kaylee, uh, she she has been requesting some socks and her dad keeps stealing them. So that's, that's a thing. We're not going to go there, <laughs> but every time I cast on a sock, uh, pair of socks now, it's so funny. Um, he, he automatically claims them, which that's fine with me, except for, like I said, these ones, nobody's getting these ones. I'm sorry. But, uh, it's so funny because now, it's like I cast on a pair of socks and he's like, they're mine. So Kaylee, she was like, I want a pair of socks. So she came to visit for the Easter weekend and I was going to do scrappy socks and she picked up, like I, she picked out some colors and I casted it on and I was like, on the way to Easter dinner, I was starting to knit them up. So I had like that much knit up, but <sighs> 
I don't know, when you go to join, I do a jogless join so that the colors don't do that jog on the first row. But it was leaving like significant size holes. Like if I was to weave it, I'm sure, weave the ends in and block it, I'm sure it would have worked out. But I just got very tired very quickly of doing scrappy socks. <laughs> so I decided to frog them because I want her to have them like in this century. So <laughs> I went into my stash and I picked out uh, a skein of Knit Picks Hawthorne in the Cosmic Speckle colorway, which is a very beautiful blue with uh, darker specks of blue and teal and there's a little bit of purple in there. It is stunning. So I decided to cast those on instead and she had already picked out the white. She wanted a contrast cuff in a, a heel so I thought that it worked perfectly with that so that's what I did. So the pattern that I choose, uh, chose sorry, uh, to cast on is the Garden Fence Socks by Nancy Wheeler and it is an amazing pattern. And I'm pretty sure you can see it there. It's a very simple pattern. It is not hard at all. I believe it is a six row repeat, but don't be intimidated by that. It is for, I don't wanna give the pattern away, but there's lots of knitting and there's really only one row that you have to pay attention to. And it ain't that hard to do at all. So absolutely love this pattern. I cast it on 60 stitches and I, um, I cast it on 60 stitches and then on my first row, because it's a knit row, I decreased down to the 56 stitch count. So Nancy's pattern, she has 56, 64, and 72 stitch counts. So um, because I am a slightly looser knitter, I feel that a 56 stitch count would be perfect for Kaylee. Uh, but I wanted to do the 60 stitches to cast on because sometimes I've noticed for myself uh, that it's... It will go over the heel, but sometimes it's a bit tight and I didn't want it to be that way. So I've been doing this quite a bit now and it's been working. So I decided to do that for hers as well. It does have a slip stitched heel flap and gusset and this is in the pattern and I absolutely love it. I, had, I have done it before, but Nancy included the garter edge on the heel uh, flap here and it is on both sides. I hope my lighting is okay, guys. And I absolutely love that. It's so easy to do. Um, so as you're knitting your heel flap, uh, you're just doing like the garter edge on both sides. And it's very, very nice. And it makes it really easy to pick up your gusset stitches. And it has a very pretty finish to it as well. So I thought that was a nice detail. And I actually will start doing that again because I think it's pretty. So Garden Fence Socks, Nancy Wheeler, that is the first sock. And I have cast it on the second one and I have it going. So I have picked up for my gusset and now I'm just ready to decrease. So I got my leg all finished and I got the heel flap all done. And now I'm just, I picked up my, uh, my gusset. So now I'm going to be doing the decreases and the foot. So it is a very quick pattern. I find it very soothing to knit. I absolutely love it. If you do not know who Nancy Wheeler is, you've got to go check her out on Instagram and Ravelry. She has very amazing designs and I absolutely love her. So yeah, there is that. And the stitch markers I have on it are actually from uh, the March mystery box from the Northern Pearl. It is these two clover leaves and I absolutely adore them. So it's not St. Patrick's Day, but I don't care. They're gorgeous. And I love putting that on. It just defines where my instep is from 
the bottom. So the white that I'm using, I have no idea what it is. It's just some scraps that were in my minis. So I just pulled it out. And then here is the Cosmic Speckle by Knit Picks. I absolutely love the Hawthorne base. There's 357 yards per skein. So there's not a lot of, uh, There's not a lot of yardage to it, but uh, still a very nice yarn. It's an 80% fine superwash Highland wool and 20% polymade. Focus, there we go. All right, so that is that. So as you see, I could have easily had the brown sock done, but I got distracted and wanted to cast these on and that's totally fine. So, there's that. So I do have one more sock project that I have been working on. So I ended up pulling out a an old whip. So I was looking for my sock needles. So I do have a sock that it's another, I think it's a Regia. It might be a Regia. Um, I have that as my car knitting. So I it's just a backup because sometimes if you're in a rush and you rush out the door, you don't grab your knitting. Usually I always make sure I grab my knitting, but sometimes it does happen. And I don't want to be stuck in the car somewhere and not have my knitting. That is just, yeah, end of the world. <laughs> not really, but anyways, I think you guys can relate. So I don't really work on that one that often, but um, I was doing a ribbed uh, sock, so I decided it was time to do the heel on it. And I had just purchased the Simply Rib Socks by um, This Handmade Life. So I decided to do the square heel version of it. So I do have, I believe I did finish the heel on that one and I'm now onto the foot. So maybe one day I will switch my bags out and bring it in to show you. But all that to say, I, I knew I was, I had a pair of sock needles in there, but I was like, I'm missing a set of needles. And so I went through my basket and yes, I did have a lingering whip. I had started this pair of socks last summer, I believe. So I have it in a cozy that my friend Azjel gifted to me. It says yarn loading. I love it. I love these, uh, little cozies. They're, they're amazing. So the yarn that I'm using is West Yorkshire Spinners 4-ply and it is a 75% wool, 25% nylon, 437 yards and the colorway name is Passion Fruit Cooler. Hopefully that uh, is focusing. I'm using a new camera here, so uh, it's a learning curve. So there it is in the skein. It is very beautiful. I really love the colors. I can't remember if I've shown this before. I might have, but all I had done was the cuff on it. So I cast it on, I believe I cast it on 60 stitches went down to 56 because I'm doing just, I just want a plain vanilla. My wrist was really, really sore last week and I wanted to knit. So I just did plain vanilla and I think they're very beautiful. I love them. I really love this colorway. So I have this one, I'm just doing plain vanilla with a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. So I am at the same spot. This is the first sock. I picked up my gusset stitches and that's as far as I have gotten with it. So while I have the bag with me, I'm just going to do a quick little show and tell here. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I already posted a picture of it this week but I ended up uh, making an order with uh, my good friend Tracy. Hi Tracy, of Grizzly Knits. And I picked up uh, 
some of her stitch markers because I haven't done that for a while and I decided to treat myself. So she had this set, it was called, I think it was I Love Socks. I don't think I have the card in here anymore, but it came with this gorgeous little progress keeper. It's a heart. And it also came with three uh, stitch markers as well. So there's one of them and the other two are you probably saw them there on this sock. Uh, they got the little pink balls on them. Very beautiful set. And then I also picked up, I could not pass this one up. I also picked up another Progress Keeper of Tracy's. How gorgeous is that? Stunning. I absolutely love Tracy's work. Do go check her out. She has a beautiful Instagram. And she is also on, uh, I believe it's Etsy. I always love it because she always puts them in these cute little bags. And here is her, her card with all her details. So go check Tracy out. Really love her. She has phenomenal work, great quality stitch markers at a great price so go check her out so that is another sock whip that I'm working on that's still this the first sock um so yeah that's been bringing me a lot of joy just to work on uh some socks and they're they're easy to do and it's not putting a ton of strain on my arm my uh my wrist so that's good so that's what I've been doing I did manage to put a little bit of work on my pressed flower shawl. So I'm doing this for a knit along that's being hosted by my local yarn store, The Pearl and Jay here in Kingston, Ontario. And I believe, I think it's March, it's the first week of May. I couldn't remember the date last time and I forgot it again, but it's like May 4th or May 6th, something like that. It's a Saturday, I do know that. Yeah, but you can show up with your finished pressed flower shawl and you can be eligible for a prize. I believe the prize is a, a local maker. She does like floral, uh, floral work. So you can pick out your own set of flowers, which I think is a beautiful prize. And if you didn't finish, that's okay. You can bring your whips in and they also have prizes for that as well. So I'm not too worried about prizes. I just wanted to join in the fun. That's why I knit the this love note for, because uh, they hosted a, a, a love note cal, and I think it's so much fun. So I decided to join in. I wasn't sure at first if I wanted to knit the shawl. I've seen the shawl around on Instagram and that for such a long time, but I was very nervous because I thought it was stranded color work. And if you know me, I'm not a huge fan. I absolutely love it and I love the look of it. Just mm, not a fan of really knitting it. But this is not stranded color work. This is mosaic knitting and you're only ever working with one color. I love it. It's very um, rhythmic for me. Some people don't like mosaic. Um, they prefer the stranded, but I like the rhythm of mosaic knitting and I love the fact that I only have to work with the one color. Um, so yep, my pressed flower shawl. I would say that I am over the halfway point now. I only have two more repeats to go. I'm already into the first repeat, I believe. Nope, I lied. I have two more repeats to go and then I get to do the border. So she has grown since the last time I shared. And I absolutely love it. It is going to be amazing. So the only difference that uh, from mine to the pattern, the uh, pattern suggests a uh, DK weight, um, or you could do DK for your main color. And then some people do use a fingering for uh, the flowers. Um, it might even be pretty to do a fingering and a mohair for the flowers too. I don't know but it's a very beautiful design 
only modification that I have done is at the top here, it calls for a um, provisional cast on. I do not do provisional cast ons. I don't like them. So I just cast it on a couple of stitches, I think, and started the shawl and I'm just, I got my tails here. So I'll just like make it look pretty when I go to weave that in. But um, the other modification is my main color. I am using uh, Cascade 220, which is technically a worsted, not a DK. So I like my shawls to be a bit bigger. So it's fine by me. Mine's going to be slightly larger, but I don't care. I like that. So I think it will work out and be perfect. So I have talked about this quite a bit. Um, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but Cascade 220, I believe this is the Heathers, uh, but it is in the wheat colorway. Very gorgeous. And then my uh, contrast color, I'm using leftovers and it is a full skein. So it uses two skeins for your main color and then one skein for your contrast. So this is uh, Midnight Cravings on their Comfort Sport base. And it is a sport, but technically it can be passed off as a DK, which is perfect. And it is in the Mary, Mary colorway. So that is what I am doing. And I love it. It's so squishy and wonderful. So will I have it done? I don't know. My wrist has really, really thrown me for a loop here and it hurts a lot to work on this. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna have it done now because we are the 22nd today. So I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I can get it done, maybe. If I stop knitting on socks, but we'll see. Maybe I'll pull this out later today and work on it. But if it starts to hurt too bad, I. I guess I have no choice but to stop. All right. So I have one more project that I'm going to share with you guys today because um, I got to work on this quite a bit. So I am, uh, I am just been enjoying, I have a few days uh, here by myself. Uh, my friend, he's taking a trip, da trip down to New Brunswick. So I'm here for a few days and that's fine by me. I'm just watching podcasts, like I'm catching up on my podcast and um, yeah, just loving it. I sat down last night with uh, a little bit of wine and my knitting and catched up on uh, Cozy Up Knits. I have been watching a lot of podcasts lately it, life has just been too hectic and busy, but I am all caught up now and I am now trying to catch up on uh, Maddie and Kristen's uh, podcast, the We Share Needles podcast. So I am, I still got a few to catch up on there. So yeah, I've just been hanging out uh, with my knitting, watching podcasts. It's glorious. I love it. So um, yeah, I decided last night that I didn't want to work on socks. I wanted to pull out my turtle dove and put some work on it. So that's what I did. So I have shared this before. I did not have very much done on it at all. But I decided that I wanted to do, I love pullovers. I have discovered this about myself. I love pullovers a little bit better than a cardigan. And I had casted uh, this yarn on to be a cardigan. It was going to be the Gramps cardigan. And I can't remember the designer's name now, but it's a very beautiful pattern. It does come in adult and child sizes, but it's got these beautiful cables uh, down the fronts and then the back is just like ribbing. So it was perfect because always sitting in the chair, it almost seems like a waste to put cables on the back of a sweater or any type of like design on the back if you're not really gonna see it. So it was perfect, but I was like, it had been on the needles for 
three years and I was like, I, I don't really want to take it out because it's beautiful. Oh, it had cables down the arms too. It start, it's a bottom up. So you start with your sleeves and I already had one sleeve done and I was just like, well, you're never going to finish it. So I decided to pull it back and something I've realized about myself, like I said, I love pullovers a little bit more and I like things that are just basic. So I decided to cast on the Turtle Dove 2. There is a version 1 and a version 2. So the Turtle Dove 2 has this really awesome neck on it and it is a raglan shape. So it's just a basic sweatshirt type sweater, but you can dress it up or dress it down. It's very elegant. It doesn't, it does have raglan shaping. It's a very gorgeous sweater and the designer is Espastri Co. And if you go over to their Ravelry, you will see many different designs. They got sweaters and shawls and they're all free. And they are amazing patterns, very amazing. So I decided I needed a turtle dove in my life. And this is what I got done. I was literally like here, I think. And I got all that done last night. I just, yep, I just went to town and it's simple. It was starting to hurt a little bit, but it's just plain knitting. At this point, I'm still increasing my raglan. I believe I'm halfway through it. Very, very pretty. I really like this. So the yarn that I'm using for this project, this is a worsted and you knit it on. I'm using a five millimeter. So I can't remember if that's what the pattern called for. It does call for worsted. Um, I don't know if that's what the pattern calls for in needles cause I am a slightly looser knitter. So sometimes I tend to go down to get the fabric that I wish. So I'm not sure. So you can go check that out but the yarn that I am using for this project is Broco Vintage. And this is in the, I can't remember now, I, Sage, Sage colorway. So Broco Vintage. And on the back, it always gives you a color number. So the color number is 5199. And if you look it up, it's, it's called Sage. And it's a 52% acrylic, 40% wool, and 8% nylon. And it is a very, very beautiful yarn. It's very soft, and I've always loved Barocco. It's, it's an amazing yarn, especially for sweaters. I love it. And I love this color so much. I never saw myself as a green person, but the past couple years, I've been knitting with a lot of green, and I really love it. So... Yeah, I tried this on last night. I didn't put it on cords, but I was a little worried about the neck because I don't like anything too confining. And oh my God, it just fits perfectly. It's going to be so nice. So I decided to do, there's different sizes. It is size inclusive, so it does go up to bigger chest sizes. Um, I decided to do a 52 inch chest. I think I might try one size down from that and put it on the barber cords and see how it fits. Because it it's starting to get there. It's starting to get, uh, you know, it's still way too small for me. I'm not even at the first size yet, obviously, because I'm just, I'm still increasing. But I noticed that I knit my sweaters too big. This one worked out nice. Um, so I'm just gonna be more mindful of that and put it on cords, take that extra minute out and see if I can actually go down one more size. I do like wearing my stuff oversized though. I, pr I prefer that, especially in a sweatshirt, but we'll see. So Espastri Co, the Turtle Dove 2, absolutely love it. Broco Vintage, love it. It's very um, price affordable. Um, at the time that I bought the skein, it has a $10 um, price. I got it at Cricut Cove in Moncton, I believe which is not Cricut Cove anymore. It's three bags full. Um, but I believe that's where I bought it. I can't remember. And I'm pretty sure Broco is still selling for around that price point. If not, maybe it's around 12 bucks Canadian now, but still I find that very affordable. You can get a sweaters quantity 
fairly cheap. So I've always loved Barocco for that. So that is my Turtle Dove 2 and I am very much enjoying it. So yeah, I kind of want to work on this today more so than my shawl. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'll, obviously I have some options. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. Um, haven't done anything else that I can think of. I didn't knit any gnomes. There is more uh, gnomes in the Grimblewood collection that I uh, want to do, but I just haven't haven't been able to do too much with that, but that's okay. So it's mo mostly been sock knitting and uh, I'm trying to, trying to put work on to that shawl, but I can't resist the sweater. We are now coming into the temperature where it is way too warm to wear sweaters, but that does not stop me from knitting them because I, winter comes and I want to have a beautiful collection of sweaters. So actually, these are like the fingering and mohair I find is very good for this type of weather. It is a wool, but wool breathes. So it's not that hot. Now the Barocco is acrylic. So that one's going to be a little bit warmer because it's not a natural fiber. So it's not going to breathe as well, but, um, it's got a good price point, like I said, and it was in my stash. I have like 10 balls of it don't know why I bought 10 balls. I'm nev nev never going to use that for the whole sweater, but it was just sitting in a bag and I was like, okay, I want to use this. I want to get it out of my stash and make it into something beautiful. So it, that's what I'm doing. So it feels really good. I have been very good. I have been using a lot of my stash up and it feels very, very good. I love it. Not to say I don't buy, I do buy once in a while, but um, I've been doing really good at stash busting and that's a good feeling. So speaking of uh, my stash, I just brought one thing along to share with you that I got. Um, I go onto the Facebook marketplace because sometimes you can find stuff local that is amazing and this was one of those things. A lady uh, locally, uh, she put up a bunch of uh, like fingering weight um, minis, leftovers uh, for sale. And oh my gosh, when I saw the picture and saw Ginger Snap, I just had to, to snatch that up right away. So I am super, super excited. This is Mi Amor set, uh, mini snaps fingering, 94 yards, 25 grams. It is a merino, 80% merino, 20% nylon, and it does have Stellina, which, wait, which one has the Stellina? Okay, the pink skein has the Stellina. I think you can see that. Oh, it's so pretty, y'all. I love it. Ginger Snap, love their logo too. So when I saw that, I like automatically hit the button, like you're coming home with me. So what's it going to be? No idea. Um, it is uh, 25 grams, so I don't know. I don't know yet, maybe a gnome. It could be a gnome, that'd be really cute. Or I might put it into one of my blankets. No idea. I just knew that I, I needed to have it because ginger snap, come on. So yeah, I got that. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much all I have been up to. And yeah, dream knitting. Um, I have, I'm still on the, um, still keeping my focus on stuff that I have on the needles, but a uh, problem with watching um, podcasts, catching up on your favorite podcasts, is that you see what other people are working on and it's like, oh, I want to cast on all the things. And uh, whenever I watch Cozy Up Knits, they are one of my biggest enablers. I'm like, oh, I want to cast them on. And Jamie, you are the worst. <laughs> she knits all these beautiful sweaters. Katie too, Sarah. And I'm like, oh my God. So Katie, uh, Jamie, 
is Jamie, yeah, Jamie's doing one, Katie's doing one, and Sarah casted one on as well, but they did the City Limits sweater by, I believe it's Tannis Fiber Arts. I really want to do that one. I think it's a DK held with a mohair, and then you like fade it or marl it, something like that. It's just so beautiful. Katie's version and even Jamie's. I love Jamie's. I really want to do this, and I have a lot of single skeins of fingering in my stash um, that I could possibly hold double. I would just need to get some like uh, plain mohair, but I was like, oh my God, I could do that. And forever I have wanted to knit a Whitmore sweater. So I am very drawn to the Whitmore because it's very much like the Tin Can Knits. Uh, it's a beautiful pullover with a little bit of lace work that just, it looks so elegant you could dress it up or dress it down. So I saw I saw theirs and I really want to cast one on. So I have several sweater quantities of DK here. So I was like, oh, I want to cast on a Whitmore, but I'm not going to cast on a Whitmore. I have my turtle dove, so I'm going to be a good girl and I'm going to finish that. But so definitely the bug is starting to, to inch back in there and I've been wanting to cast new things on. Um, I kind of want to cast on another uh, DRK cowl. I showed one, I believe on the last podcast, I knit a brown one. Um, that is by Andrea Mowry. Um, I knit that one out of fingering, one skein of fingering held with Surrey alpaca and it just turned out a little bit too small for me. I talked about that. Uh, I did do the largest size, so there's a child size. I think there's three or four different sizes, but it, there is a, an adult small and an adult large. Uh, I did do the adult large, but it still turned out a little too small for my liking. So one of the things, and I believe Jamie mentioned this too, and she knit one as well, uh, she, you finish when you finish it off, it has like an eye cord which gives it a very beautiful finish, um, but it is a little bit tighter. So I'm thinking that if I knit another one, it is a DK weight. Um, I'm thinking I have a couple options in my stash. Um, I might use uh, a worsted weight instead. And if I find it's getting too big, then I can just do the adult small. Um, but when I go to do the eye cord, something I'm thinking about, um, if it calls for say a 4.5 millimeter needle, I would use a five millimeter needle to bind it off just so it's a little bit looser and not so tight. So it is meant to stay close to your, to your neck. And I really love that, but it's just a little too tight for me. So there is options, but, um, I really love the mohair. I might hold it with like a DK with Surrey just to give it that little extra thickness. I'm not sure what I want to do yet, but that is another thing I've kind of been wanting to cast on, but I also am thinking of an, another asymmetrical shawl for spring because we still have some days where it's a little bit cooler. Everybody else is walking around in t-shirts and shorts, but I find it still a little bit chilly. So I would like to wear my sweater with a, a pretty shawl. So I've been wanting to cast one on. I ended up picking up some um, Malabrego Rios, which is a worsted weight. And it's in a very beautiful fuchsia colorway. And I, I won't be able to grab it without dropping everything down. But um, it's very beautiful. So I've been kind of itching to ball those up and cast something on with that. So I'm thinking any symmetrical shawl, which one I have a couple in mind, but I'm not sure yet, but I have been, I have the itch to cast on. I'm just trying to be very good about it because I'd like to get a couple of my socks off the needles first, and I'm very close to getting two off the needles for sure. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've been a good girl lately though, with projects in my stash. So I feel good about that. So that means I can treat myself, right? I can cast something new on, <laughs> get something else out of my stash. I mean, that's a good excuse, right? Anywho, 
I'm gonna stop babbling now and let you guys go. So as I said at the beginning, I always put details, show notes in the description box below. There's like a little arrow if you don't see it, so you can just click on that and um, it drops down. And I always list the makers because my Ravelry pages are pretty just, they're for my personal use. It's a way for me to look back and see what I have knit. And if I was really good about it, I would put the needle size that I used and all that stuff. Um, but my notes are, I don't really put notes. I'm not a detailed person with that. So I always just link you directly to the designers instead, because you'll get a lot better info from that. So yeah, you can also find social links where you can find me below as well on Instagram. Uh, I'm Inspired Knitting Podcast, non Ravelry. Uh, if you wish to send me a friend request, that's fine. I am as X Country Girl 1986X. So yeah, don't be afraid to comment. I love hearing from you guys. And uh, if you really like the podcast, give it a thumbs up. It does help. So yeah. So until next time, guys, I hope you have a great weekend and a great week ahead. Um, it is really nice outside, but I've already been out and got my coffee. So I think I'm just going to go continue watching uh, Maddie and Kristen, We Share Needles podcast and finish my coffee and pick something to knit on and just enjoy the rest of my afternoon. There is a uh, yarn festival. There's quite a few that are going to be happening. Um, there's one in uh, Jasper, I think. The Cozy Up Girls were just talking about it. Uh, that's happening the first week of May. And I know Knit City Montreal is coming up. And also uh, there is another yarn festival going on this weekend in Quebec City. And my friend got to go and I'm a little bit jealous, but I hope you have a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, it'd be really cool to go to Knit City Montreal. We aren't that far away from it being here in Kingston, but yeah, I don't think so. Yarn Store Day is coming up, so um, that's fun. That's really fun. I might have to be naughty and uh, go see what's happening, but we'll see. So lots of good things to look forward to. I don't think the Toronto Yarn, um, I don't think the Toronto uh, Wool Festival is going on this year. I still believe that they are canceling it due to COVID because COVID is still a thing, unfortunately, um, to my knowledge, because I did look into that. I was really hoping uh, to go to that one. That way I can meet some of my uh, my knitting friends that I know on Instagram and through podcasts, but I don't think that one's happening. Um, there might be one happening near Woodstock, Ontario, I think, but that's just a little too far for, it's not really that far, but it's a little far for me to go, I think, but lots of interesting things coming up with the summertime. So yeah, always look forward because I, have, I haven't done research before and missed out on things like that. So uh, lots of good stuff to look forward to this summer with knitting, knitting related. So yeah. Anyways, I'm going to stop babbling. You guys have a great weekend, a great week ahead, and I will talk to you guys all soon. Bye.